Slave to Nothing by Zach Williams. It's time now for This Day in History. You're listening to You, Me Radio Morning Show. I'm DJ Kelly, and thanks for joining me. So on this day in history, January 8th, 19, sorry, 18, I'm always mixing up my years. Get it together, girl, get it together. <laughs> okay, so on this day in history, January 8th, 1867, African-American uh, men gain the right to vote in Washington, D.C., as being reported by history.com. On January 8, 1867, African-American men gained the right to vote in the District of Columbia despite the veto of its most powerful residents, President Andrew Johnson. The Republican-controlled Senate overrode Johnson by a vote of 29 to 10, Three years after, sorry, three years before, a constitutional amendment granted the right to vote to all men regardless of race. At the time, citizens of D.C. voted for a local council but had no representation in Congress and no say in presidential elections. Congress was the final authority on many matters for the district, including voting rights. To this day, the capital The capital city's budget is the only municipal budget in the country subject to congressional approval. At the end of the Civil War, Lincoln's Republican Party dominated the legislature, which had been reduced in size and drained of Democrats due to the secession of southern states. Johnson, however, was not a Republican, but rather a unionist Democrat, unionist Democrat, uh, whom Lincoln had chosen as his running mate during the Civil War in the hopes of appealing to Southern unionists. As evidenced by his veto, Johnson valued reconciliation with the former Confederacy over racial equality. He also opposed the 14th Amendment, which made freed slaves citizens. Johnson's opposition to the Republicans' views on Reconstruction would define his presidency and lead to his becoming the first president ever to be impeached. Though he was unable to stop Congress, from granting voting rights to the African-Americans of D.C., he spent much of his presidency vetoing the bills of the so-called radical reconstructions. African-American men in D.C., with some exemptions, including those on welfare, gained the right to vote three years before the 15th Amendment guaranteed that right for all American men. Regardless of race, as citizens of D.C., however, they did not gain the right to vote in federal elections until 1961. Today, the nation's capital stands on equal footing with, this, with the states in the Electoral College, but its congressional representation remains limited to a single non-voting member of the House of Representatives. Many officials license, license plates, license plates, in the district carry the phrase taxation without representation a nod to the irony that the capital of the united states has roughly the amount of influence in the legislative process as it bid before the revolutionary war why do i feel like before i said 14th let's see um Well, I hope I said 15th, because it says it's the 15th um, Amendment, not the 14th, just in case that's what I said. Yeah, I did. He also opposed the 14th. Okay, so there are two of them. Okay, all right. He also opposed the 14th, 14th Amendment, which made freed slaves citizens, and then the 15th and the... uh, Include, gained the right to vote three years before the 15th Amendment guaranteed that all right 
that's right for all American men, regardless of race. Okay, so it's two different things, two different um, amendments. Just wanted to make sure I got that correct. Um, so on this day in history, 1867, January 8, African American men gain, gained the right to vote in Washington, D.C.